had given us these eight fathers in the form of blessing. And in spite of having this blessing, this divine blessing from Baba, our past samsaras, our past actions, or our past habits become so powerful, they overpower these blessings that we are not able to use these blessings in a right way. And in this series, the first, the first power which we learned was about power of tolerance. And what we understood is that this power of tolerance helps us to reach at the top and helps us to be successful in life. And today we're going to talk about the second power, which is power of accommodation. And before I kick start this um, topic, I'm going to start with a story. Once upon a time, there was a king and in his kingdom. There were these small shopkeepers, small vendors um, who used to sell their things on the cart. Um, so the king So the king, when he used to make his evening walks, he used to see, he used to see that you know these vendors are trying to sell. They are trying to sell their product, and maybe like few of them are still left behind. So the king, when he used to come for his evening walk, he used to look at that, and then he used to buy those things from the vendor, so that you know they have the satisfaction they have, that they have sold everything. So one day, you know, when the king was walking, as usual, he saw a vendor who had three dolls on his cart. And those three dolls, nobody was buying those three dolls. And everyone who was passing by, he was, he was pleading, he was requesting them that why don't, please come and buy these, these unique uh, dolls. So when the king saw that, the king went and asked him, how much, how much is it for the, for the dolls? So the vendor said, the vendor said that the first doll, the first doll is for 10 rupees. The second doll is 100 rupees. And the third one is for 1,000 rupees. So the king was confused and the king said that if the three dolls all looked up, the three dolls looked the same, then why, why is there a difference in the price? So the vendor says, well, they all look the same, but they all three of them have different specialities in them. The first, the first one, the first one of uh, the first doll, if you put a wire inside her ear from one side, it comes out from the other side, it comes out from the other ear. The second one, if you put the wire through the ears, the end of the wire comes out through the mark. And that one is for 100 rupees. The first one was 10, the second one was 100. And the third one is if you put the wire on the third doll through the ears, it just goes inside her, it doesn't come out. And that one is for 1,000. So the meaning, the, the analogy means that, that for the first doll, when you say something to the first doll, whether you tell the doll, you know, something good or something bad, she listens. She listens and she doesn't, she doesn't get, she doesn't get bothered by it.
And the second one, when she hears anything, whether good or bad, she then speaks, speaks that through her mouth. So when she speaks, when she hears good, then, you know, she speaks good about it. So that's why, that's why it's about 100 rupees. And the third one, whether she hears anything good or anything bad, she just keeps it to herself. So even if someone has said something bad, she's not talking about it to anyone. She just keeps it within herself. And that's why she's the most valuable one. And that's why she, she is for 1,000 rupees. And hence the power of accommodation is one of the most powerful ones. So there are three types of people the same way. The first one, when they listen, and they listen good things, but they don't make it their own. They just listen and they're not bothered by it. The second one, second set of people are where they listen and then they, they speak and they speak to other people, but might not be imbibing those things. But the third one is when she hears, when they hear something good, then she imbibes that, she makes it her nature. And that's why that's the most valuable, that's the most valuable character, the most valuable at all. So that's why Baba also says that when you imbibe and when you become the embodiment of what you, anything good you listen, then that is real power. These days, when we all live in a you know, locking family, in a spiritual family, or in our own family, we, we will be listening to so many things. And we need to have the art to understand what we need to accommodate within us. Baba, as we all know, we call him the ocean of knowledge. And each and every word what he tells us, we have to understand those words and we have to be a practical example of those words. And how do we do that? By doing chintan over his words by going deeper in each and every sentence of Baba's words and imbibing that in, in all our five senses. So Baba's words, we have to, we have to imbibe that We have to imbibe that not in our blood, not in our cells, but in all our senses, in each and every part of our body. It's like when you eat food, when it gets digested, then that becomes energy. So in the same way, when we listen to Baba's words, when we listen to the spiritual knowledge, and when we make it a part of our character, of our nature, then that becomes our true power. So once you start, once you, once you are, once you become that power, and then when you, trans, when you, when you um, give to the people around you, 
then that's the way you are spreading joy around you. In life, you know, we all face obstacles and we all face challenges. So to overcome these challenges, these obstacles, that's when we need these powers. And when these powers are a part of you in each and every cell of yours, then you use these powers at the right time. And then it's very easy, very easy to jump over these obstacles. And sometimes when we don't apply them in small, in small um, scenarios of life and very small um, test of ours, then, you know, we are not able to handle that. So that so the aim is when you become a symbol of this power, it's that within a second, we are able to bring ourselves, we are able to detach ourselves from the situation. And then we are able to detach ourselves from the situation. And then we, are, we are able to see ourselves very stable in that situation. So only, so only when we are detached with that situation and when we, within a second, are able to do that, able to detach ourselves from that situation, then we are able to change the situation with our power. We are able to change the situation in a positive way. And if it takes time, if it doesn't take a second, it takes time and it takes a lot of effort for us to change this, then that means we still need a lot of power. Like Baba always tells us that all these all these powers I'm giving you as a blessing. So if Baba is giving us all these eight powers as a blessing and it's constantly available for us, then why aren't we able to invoke these powers at the right time? And when we are not able to invoke these powers at the right time, then we get very angry, frustrated, and irritated. So then, so then if Baba is giving us this power, then, then what is the reason that we can't invoke these powers? So Baba has then said that whatever Baba's direction is, whatever direction Baba has given, whatever schedule Baba has given us or the Mariadas Baba has given us, the Srimad Baba has given us. And when we imbibe that right from Amrit Vela, then, then, then these powers are very easy to invoke. So when, when you are constantly, when you're constantly like, yes, for all the Srimad, when we are following all the disciplines of the Shrima and we are saying yes to everything, and we are saying yes to all the things, then, then, yeah, then you can invoke these powers. But for example, if you say, oh, uh, you know, it's okay, maybe one of this, I might, you know, I, I, I can't pay attention to it. So, so for example, when we get up 
for example, Baba says to get up in, um, uh, during Amrit Vena and remember him. But sometimes when we forget, we are like, okay, it's okay if we haven't got up in the morning. Maybe later when I get up, then, I'll, then that's when I'll remember him. That's where we falter. Because when we decide, okay, not now, maybe this is not important. Maybe I can do this some other time, maybe not at four o'clock, maybe at six o'clock or seven o'clock when I get up. So when I am not following the shima, when I'm not saying Hanji, Hanji is like when I'm not saying yes to Baba's shima, Baba's direction, then I'm not able to use the power. Srimad and Shakti have a very strong um, interconnection. Srimad, Baba's direction, Shakti, the powers. So sometimes we, sometimes we say yes to Baba, sometimes we say no to things, and we take it very in a very ordinary fashion. We don't see the importance of Baba, what Baba is saying. Then those people won't be able to use these powers because Baba's powers are constantly being given to us. So suppose you want to use the power to accommodate or the power um, to understand and take it within you. But if, you're not, if, you, if you haven't followed Srimad, what will happen is you might remember one or two times you'll be able to do that, but the third or the fourth time you won't be able to do it. Because again, as she's mentioning, that Baba is continuously giving. But if you are not able to use that, if you're not able to invoke that when you need that, that means there is something where you're missing, something what you're not following in Srimad. So there are two things. There are two things. Power of... Um, Forgetting. So what is past is past. So what happens is we all at the conscious level, we might not forget that. So it's very easy at the conscious level that we might forget certain things of the past. But at the sub a subconscious level, those things are still there. It's like, you know, it's not, our mind is not clean, it, our mind is not clear, it still has those past impressions, those past uh, experiences. And that's why sometimes, that's why sometimes we are not able to, we are not able to forget those things. Because though it is clear in the conscious level, but subconscious level, we still have those impressions. So that's why Baba says that if your aim is to become an angel, then, then you have to be completely pure and clean at the conscious and subconscious level. And for that, you have to imbibe the knowledge very deeply. And when you do that, anything negative can be then. Anything negative can be changed into positive. So it's not that the negative, whatever negative is, or the negative some stars you have, negative habits you have, you're just like um, taking in with you and saying, okay, this is what it is. But it is about the about changing the energy, the negative energy changing into positive energy. So it's the first thing what we saw, that if we imbibe the knowledge, 
in each and every cell, in each and every habits of ours, in each and every senses of ours, if we understand that and we are able to imbibe that at the subconscious level, then it's very easy to remain free of obstacle and wherever you want to concentrate, you will be able to concentrate. The second thing, the second thing what you need to accommodate is this life which we have got, the spiritual life which we have all received, the Brahmin life which we all have been given. We have been given this Brahmin life. We might not be born as a Brahmin, but we have been given this spiritual life And the, and the goal of the spiritual life, and the goal of the spiritual life is to become karmatit. Didi is saying that we all have this all have this habit that you know we go very deep over the years we all have this habit that any issue any situation or for anything we expand that like we you know if there's any situation we go deeper into it and we you know argue about it or we just try to figure out what is having uh, what is happening around it and we go into the expansion of the problem like why this happened, what happened, how did this happen, who was responsible uh, for this. So we just keep on expand, we just keep on expanding the problem. And we all have these scars because of taking birth for so many years. So that's why Baba says, just come in the essence, come, come to the point. And that's why pay attention that do not expand, do not go, do not spread your energy in so many directions. When we spread our energy in so many directions, that's where we lose our power. If there is any situation, just come back, hold yourself, to be the sense of it. And when we are able to do this, then, then we are able to invoke any power at whatever situation, at, depending upon the situation. And that's where, what is called as uh, the powerful one. So right now, our effort should be on. Our effort should be on to not get entangled in the situation, not go in the expansion of the situation, not spread our energy in a different situation, but immediately come to the essence of it and then try to resolve it. Like she's given an example of the seed and the tree. Like the seed has everything in it and the seed then expands into a tree. So the seed has, has the power of the of being the tree, right? It can just erupt into this tree. But at this point, we don't have to go in that. We have to become the seed at this point. We have to become the essence of it. So we have to, another word of being a seed is being soul conscious. 
because right now is the time since we want to go back to our home. And Baba has been given, giving us direction that if you have to come along with me, then you need to stop this, this expansion. And what all we need to take care of, like the family, the way, you know, where we have expanded ourselves or uh, with service where we have expanded ourselves. So all that thing is that right now is the time where all of us, we need to be detached from all these things. So imagine a situation where you know you it's your it's your it's the final moment and at the final moment you get attracted by so many devices around you or so many people around you or so many things around you materialistic things around you then when the final moment comes then it's then it's so it will be so difficult to detach ourselves at that time so then that's why Baba says that you are a bindi like you are a point of light, Baba is a point of light too, and then drama is also a point, like full stop in drama too. So do you have that power to do that at the final moment? That's why Baba keeps on saying that put a full stop on all these situations around you, all the things around you, try to put a full stop, full stop, is also like a um, small dot. So to stop for drama, it is a, a, a dot, and you are a dot, and Baba is a dot. And this will decide whether which garland you will belong to. The art, the garland of eight, the garland of 108, or the garland of 16,000. The difference is going to be how you use these powers, how did you apply these powers, that will decide which garland you will belong to. So again, two things. First is knowledge, you imbibe the knowledge. Second is expansion. You're not going in expansion, putting a stop to the expansion. And the third one is that we all of us belong to the spiritual family. And this, this spiritual family acts as a fort. It's like a support system and is a fort. So anyone who comes from outside won't be able to attack this. Like if, they, you know, for example, when you have a very nice, strong fort, nobody can attack the fort. But if the fort is attacked at its uh, weak point, then the entire fort can collapse. So that's why Baba also says that this, this family, that this family is like the fort, that this family is like a very strong support system and a very strong quote for us. And we have to remain within these walls. And the way we can be, and the way we can be uh, strong in this world is by having faith, by having faith on Baba and faith on each other. And that is our very strong foundation. There's no reason where we should have any waste thought when we see other people, um, you know, having waste thought as to why is he doing that? He shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't have any of the waste thought. If we see it, we immediately need to accommodate that and understand that. And in fact, give him strength and support to change. 
So, for example, when you're living in your family, you don't talk about your family weaknesses um, to other people, or you don't display your family weaknesses in public. So, the same way, this is our spiritual family. Yes, you might see. Yes, you might see someone doing something wrong, and yes, you might see that that person is clearly wrong. But you need to have faith in that person. and keeping in mind that this, is, this could be this is drama and there must be a reason why this is happening so when you keep faith in the faith at in the person and faith in drama then it's very easy it will be very easy for you to adjust to accommodate this did this it is telling a story that there was um, that there was a family, and the family had some disputes going on, and there were a lot of disputes going on in the family, and uh, they were almost about to separate out in the family, but during that time, a guest came in. At the same time, a guest came in to eat uh, dinner. And when he came in, he saw that the two daughter-in-laws of the house had rolling pin in her hand. And the guest was wondering, why do these, why do these two women have rolling pins in their hand? So the mother-in-law understood that the guest must be thinking um, um, you know, what's wrong with these people. So she immediately took him to his room and said, uh, you know, this is your room and you can go to your room and rest and, and then when, when you're ready, come down to have dinner. And she said, look, when you came, that, uh, that, that when you came, that both of them, uh, both of the daughter-in-laws had uh, a rolling pin in their hand because they, they have so much love within themselves and love for you, that they both wanted to be uh, naan for you, root bread for you. So they both were, you know, they both were uh, lovingly uh, fighting over um, um, who will make the food for them, who will make the food. So the guest was very happy thinking that, wow, I've been received in so much love. And so when he came down, when when he when he came down to eat and uh, when the bread was offered to when the bread was offered to the guest, he asked. So finally, who made this bread? So the, the younger daughter-in-law immediately came to know that oh, um, you know, my mother-in-law must have said something to him. So she didn't want to say anything bad. So uh, she said, oh, my the older the older daughter-in-law made the bread. So the guest was very happy and very pleased that um, my, you know, I was served so well and so lovingly in this family. But actually what was happening was, before the guest came in, actually what was happening was that the both the daughter-in-laws, they were fighting over the rolling pin. One said that she wanted to take the rolling pin and go with her. The other wanted to take the rolling pin. But the mother-in-law was so wise that she didn't want to, um, she didn't want to display the personal uh, dispute in front of uh, in front of a guest. So she made up the story, and uh, she kept the respect and the dignity of the family. So, in the same way, in this spiritual family, also, it's very important for us to accommodate someone else's mistake. And it's very important, anything which has happened in the past, we need to leave it in the past. Because if we get things, if we get things from the past into the present, 
then again, then again, there's just a series of waste of thoughts. And then you are just thinking about all these, all the waste things. And then you're not able to have this, this strength, the strength in the family. You're not, we're not able to have the strength in the family. And the faith then disappears, the faith on faith on each other, faith in this family. So what, what we need to keep in mind is that whatever we see, whatever we hear, we just need to accommodate that and keep good wishes and keep well wishes for that person or for that situation. The main point is to have mercy, Rahim. Rahim, which is mercy, to have mercy, forgiveness to the person or to the situation. And if you do that, and if you do that, then automatically the other person will realize his mistake and will get the power to make those changes. And if you don't, even if even if you even if you accommodate even if you accommodate at that point, but if you don't have the real power at that moment, then what will happen is that yes, you at that point you didn't say, but then it will come out some other time. It will come out in some other situation. Like for the example, the mother-in-law uh, who, you know, he, she immediately knew what to do at at the, that moment, um, so she not only um, tolerated it, but she also accommodated that situation and changed that situation into a positive situation. In a typical household, um, sometimes there is a conflict between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. And based on their habits or based on their nature, you know, you're not able to tolerate uh, each other. But if, but if suppose there is a daughter-in-law who still tolerates, you know, her mother-in-law, and um, is um, tries to tolerate the situation, tries to tolerate her mother-in-law, but she's only tolerating it, but she hasn't accommodated that. She hasn't understood that this is what, my, what the nature of my mother-in-law is, and she hasn't changed her outlook towards it. So what is she gonna do? She's going to go to her friend and speak ill about her mother-in-law uh, to her friend. So now she's gonna go and talk to a couple of her friends and then talk to them about her mother-in-law. And then the friend is going to go and talk about her. Uh, her friend is going to go and talk about her. Uh, the friend is going to go and talk to her mother that, look, my friend is facing um, so much of uh, so much situation with her mother-in-law. So that mother now goes back to the, to the um, daughter-in-law's house And then she goes and talks, talks to her, talks to the mother-in-law and says, you know, you should not do these things. You should, you should leave um, small, small things. Uh, and then the mother-in-law would, mother would ask like, how do you know this? Why are you telling me all this thing? And then that lady would say, 
that your daughter-in-law came to my to came to my daughter and she talked about all these things and that's how i came to know about it and that's why i'm coming to explain you this so the mother in law now is not going to say anything to that lady but now when her daughter in law comes back to the house then what is going to happen it's going to be again it's going to be uh, not going to be a pleasant scene so though the daughter in law tolerated it she tolerated the actions or the behavior of her mother in law but she only tolerated it she did not accommodate her mother in law's name she went and started talking about her to her friends so there was no point of using the power of tolerance because with power of tolerance you need to have power to accommodate that to understand that and then to change the situation or to change your outlook into a positive outlook like example of brahma baba like brahma baba also when he started off he also used both of the powers so the same way we follow father and we use both of the powers where we don't see we don't see people's weaknesses we don't see their fault and we accept that and we understand that and so when you do this when you do this you would you would get baba's blessings and then you get two blessings which is um the unity of the family and the unity of the family and the blessings what you will get based on the unity and then through you you will reveal baba you will be the person who will then eventually reveal baba from your nature from your uh, behavior so the third point was that we have to we have to accommodate uh the the uh, the nature of this uh spiritual family and the fourth point the fourth point is given an example of the ocean like how the ocean is so vast and all the rivers eventually eventually come to the ocean and uh when these rivers come in they bring all you know all the things along with them um like all the garbage all the rubbish everything comes along with the river and the ocean just just opens her arm and accommodates accommodates the river and then what it does is then through its internal cleansing it accommodates the water and all the all the garbage all the rubbish is then deposited on the on the shores so just like the ocean we also have to we also have to accommodate people around us and if something if something um comes along with that which is not that good you just throw it out at the shore just like how the ocean does and just like the ocean you know how the ocean has a lot of uh, has a bed full of pearls 
um, in so it, it it deposits all the rubbish and all the garbage at the shore, but deep within has all these pearls. So the same way we have to be. You know, beautiful example. The way the way um, a pearl is made is through the dust particle, right? So the same way, the way the ocean takes the dust particle and converts it into a pearl. The same way, we need to accommodate, we need to adjust, and we need to become like this vast ocean where we understand and adjust, we tolerate, and we accommodate, and we change the situation into a positive one. And then the last one, the fifth one is to be immersed in Baba's love. And if Baba is our world, if Baba is our entire world, then, then all we have to do is just be immersed in Baba's love. And when Baba's love, we have to be lovely. And when and when we are immersed in Baba's love, when we are immersed in Baba's qualities which are, you know, just love, peace, pure, knowledgeable. When we're immersed in when we're immersed in those qualities, then we become an example. We imbibe those qualities and we become like that. And the sixth one is the sixth one where we have to accommodate or adjust is. Uh, with time, whatever things are coming with time, whether whether they are situations, whether they are people who are coming um, based on the current times when we are facing situations through uh, people or through um, uh, our obstacles, we have the power to face that and adjust with those situations. Just like Baba, like how Baba, when like Repart came, then Baba adjusted at that at that time. When Baba was a business person at that time, he was, you know, he behaved like that. Uh, whatever life situation came, um, whether it was the big Repart, uh, whether there was a lot of um, people who were against him, he always he was always able to adjust with those situation. Whatever the situation may be, whether good or whether bad, any any circumstances, Baba was able to adjust, and the same way we need to we need to imbibe that. And while doing this, we don't have to be. We don't have to be, we don't have to make ourselves heavy in our head. We don't have to become very heavy in our head. And the person who's able to adjust the other, other, the other qualities, the other qualities also come along with that. The power of strength, the power of faith, and that everything else comes along with that. So, 
better I can keep somebody in the front than I let them if let them be in the front. So wherever wherever the situation demands, where you have to give respect to other people, uh, where there's respect involved. Um, there you put other people in the front, and wherever and any situation where there has to be any changes made, there you keep yourself in the front. So again, first imbibe the knowledge. Imbibe the knowledge. Second, the expansion. You know, whatever expansion we have, come in the essence, bring it to a point. The third is the spiritual family, have faith in it. The fourth one, just like the ocean, like how the ocean, ocean accommodates everything and then converts the dust or the garbage into pearls. That one, fourth one. Fifth one is in Baba's love. We have to immerse ourselves in Baba's love. And the sixth one is based on time, based on the current time and the situations in front of us, we need to adjust. So these are the six, these are the six um, ways in, um, in imbibing, in uh, accumulating the power of um, accommodation. Didi's asking, is, is everything good? Everything okay? Is this good? Vaishali sisters. Vaishali sister has requested, requested to do a meditation on topic. So we will sit in meditation for, for some time. And we invoke this power uh, of accommodation. So all of us will sit and try to bring our attention to ourselves. And see ourselves as this point of light. Let me at the center, center of the forehead. I am this divine being in the center of the forehead. I the soul, I am the master of all my senses. Slowly take your mind and your intelligence towards Baba in his company. like I am a point of light. In the same way, my Baba, my Father, is also a point of light, a very powerful 
a very divine, powerful point of light. I the soul, I am in Baba's company and I'm looking at him. And I'm imbibing all his qualities, all his virtues in me. Baba, who is my father and my mother, I can experience each and every relation with Baba. I can have each and every relation with Baba and in this immense love I immerse myself I merge myself in this in this love it's just me and my Baba and nobody else around me just me and Baba. Such a beautiful experience. Beautiful, loving experience of just me and my Baba. And I receive all the powers from Baba. I can feel receiving all the powers from Baba. And as I receive, and as I receive these powers, as I imbibe these powers, I spread these powers to everyone around me. I receive Baba's powers and then spread these powers to everyone around me. Very slowly, I see myself getting purified 
by Baba's, by Baba's powers, by Baba's love. And all my past negative experiences and all the past negative karms, karmas are getting washed away in Baba's, in Baba's company, in Baba's love. And my heart and my thoughts and my feeling are all getting purified. And in Baba's company, I the soul is becoming powerful it's such a beautiful and a powerful scene. On one side, there is Baba, who is a seed. And on the other side, I too experience myself as the seed. And slowly bring your mind, your attention and your mind, intelligence and your attention back to these five senses, back to the center of the forehead. But now it's with it's with this new divine energy. Om Shanti.